Hello, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Mark Lashley. I am the chairman and CEO of Universal Tennis. Uh, and I'm super excited to be here today to talk to you a little bit about what we're doing uh, to bring technology and solutions and innovation to the game of tennis. Um, let me share my presentation here. And what I plan to do here for the next half hour or so is to tell you a little bit about everything we're doing to try to make tennis more accessible, affordable, and fun. Um, as such, uh, let me start with a little bit of background on myself. Um, I am the chairman, CEO, and principal owner of Universal Tennis. I purchased the business uh, at the year end of uh, 2017. And I have had a long history and background in tennis, uh, being a junior uh, collegiate tennis player in the United States, an ATP tour player. Um, and I've spent many a years now uh, giving back to the game of tennis, uh, supporting a number of different foundation initiatives, uh, as well as uh, currently being the chair of uh, Harvard Tennis, uh, men's Harvard Tennis. Uh, in terms of background and experience, I spent the last 25 years uh, working with technology companies uh, out here in Silicon Valley, uh, working in the venture capital as well as uh, private equity. Uh, I've also spent uh, a large amount of my time investing in sports and being involved around media and technology. I'm currently a team owner in a couple of different sports uh, teams as well as leagues, ranging from mixed martial arts to uh, European soccer and uh, US-based soccer, as well as esports and, and others. Uh, so it's with that and that background that I've come to tennis and specifically to universal tennis. And we have been building out a team and an effort uh, to try to really innovate and bring solutions to tennis. Um, so what is universal tennis? Um, universal tennis is a Silicon Valley based company uh, with a workforce spread throughout uh, the world, uh, particularly during these COVID times. Uh, we are a tech company and a solutions company uh, with about 75 employees. Uh, as I mentioned up front, our goal and our mission is to try to bring tennis uh, uh, solutions and technology solutions. Uh, we have not had sufficient innovation, in my opinion, in the game of tennis. Um, and uh, as part of that is helping to make the game more personalized, accessible, affordable, and frankly fun. Uh, as part of all of that, we have uh, a universal tennis rating that I'll talk about in a minute. And we built a huge platform around the universal tennis rating system that is looking to help players, coaches, federations, clubs, and academies engage their audiences more effectively uh, to create value and also to generate revenue uh, and to support those institutions in their local communities. And so at the end of the day, all of this is really geared around the notion of trying to unlock a better experience in tennis, a more fruitful, a more profitable, uh, and a more successful um, tennis environment. Uh, we've been fortunate enough to attract a wonderful group of investors and collaborators, uh, Novak Djokovic, a teammate, uh, with Roger Federer and his partners, uh, Tennis Australia, uh, Larry Ellison, as well as Oracle and Tennis Channel are all investors in our company, uh, as well as uh, collaborators and contributors. Uh, beyond that, we have forged uh, over 70 major partnerships uh, with influencers and folks that are deeply embedded in tennis, ranging from academies based in the United States like IMG and John McEnroe's Academy, to Rafa Nadal and Maritaglu and Kimza academies in Europe. And then also teaching professionals, working with folks at the USPTA and PTR, as well as Orange Coach, Orange Coach in Europe. Um, we are also the official rating of college tennis. Uh, we are the gold standard um, uh, of, for college recruiting, working closely with the Intercollegiate uh, Tennis Association. Uh, we now are working with more than 90% of all college coaches and campuses uh, to help um, them in their mission to uh, support and build college tennis. Uh, we'll talk more about that in a little bit. Beyond that, we have built solutions now for thousands and thousands of local um, clubs and academies uh, throughout the world, and we're growing at a very significant pace. So what is universal tennis rating? Um, universal tennis rating uh, was originally built back in uh, 2007 and has really been perfected uh, since then uh, and significantly expanded upon. As I mentioned, I came into this in 2017 uh, and we really have significantly investing in making this better, more relevant and more broad. Uh, as such, um, in a simple 
sentence, UTR is today the best way to measure yourself against all other players around the world, regardless of their age and level. Um, I thought what I could do here is play a video we actually put together a couple of years ago that I thought actually fairly well captured. So the essence and a good description of this. Ever wonder how you compare to the best players in the world? Well, now you can find out thanks to UTR, the universal tennis rating. Here's how it works. UTR is a number between one and 16.5 that players earn based on their results. Three factors go into the rating, competition, score, and recent history. Tough competition is an opportunity to get a higher rating. Match scores are factored in, so if a player loses a tight one, they still get credit. It's also current. A player's UTR is based on the most recent 30 matches within the last year. UTR is exclusively based on head-to-head -head results and the score. It does not factor in how far players get in a draw. Strength of schedule is very important. Beating or at least competing against top players is the best way to raise your UTR. Top professionals have the highest ratings. For example, Rafa Nadal and Roger Federer ended 2017 as the top two men in the world with UTRs over 16.25. And as you can see, there are some other surprise names from the traditional ATP rankings. Every player, regardless of gender, nationality, and even age is rated on the same system. So by checking out your UTR, you're truly learning where you stand in the tennis universe. So even though that video was put together in 2017, I think it is still completely reflective of what we're doing today. And of course, what we've done since then is we've vastly expanded upon this. And today it's a global system. We operate in 72 countries. Um, and it is the most accurate global system for measuring and rating players on the same scale, as you saw in that video. Uh, so what is that scale? It is, as a reference, a 16-point um, scale. It goes from beginners and recreational players all the way up into the professional ranks. And as such, if you're a 7 UTR, whether you're a man, a woman, a boy, or a girl, um, in whatever location is, seven speaks to your level as a tennis player across age and gender and location. And so now what you have is a system that allows you to basically rate everybody on the same standard. Um, and no matter where you are in the world and no matter how much you play or how little you play and the intensity of your efforts. Um, this is also, UTR is a free rating for every player. Every single person who is in our system receives that rating for free and can have it for free forever. Um, the other thing here that is super important is that we maintain the highest standards of privacy and safety for the kids. Uh, we are complying with all the data protection standards and whatever data we pull into our system is protected appropriately. Uh, we do work with federations as well as clubs and others. And the data we import is very much the Federation's data. Um, we use it to generate a UTR. Uh, they provide us that data um, and give us access to that data. It is their data. It's not our data, but all we do is to use it to generate a UTR. Um, and as such, um, it's really the UTR that comes out of this that we then use more broadly. Um, we also have had wonderful support uh, from great legends and cha champions in the game. Um, you know, whether it's Jim Courier who, really believes in this as an interesting standard for building um, a network in tennis, whether it's Martina, who loves the democratization this provides, or whether it's Tracy, who's been using this system with her kids growing up as juniors and looking to access the collegiate uh, environment. Uh, we haven't done any endorsement deals. Um, these are people that genuinely believe in our cause, whether it's these individuals here or Novak or, or teammate and others, um, they believe in what we're doing and we do not write endorsement deals. So what do we have at the end of the day? I think what we've created so far is the most accurate rating system in the world. It's an algorithm-based system um, that aggregates results from all these various pathways that we've talked around, from the ATP to the WTA to the ITF to national federations to local clubs and leagues. Um, and it all gets put into the system. We have over 20 million match results in there now, and we have uh, over 2 million players that are rated in our system. Uh, it then creates the UTRs on a relative basis. So everybody's mapped against each other and it updates on a 24 hour basis on the same scale. Uh, this is very, very complicated. It's not easy to do. 
Um, and so people often ask us, well, how does this rating system compare to any particular other rating system? Well, there are 2000 rating systems out there in the world. Uh, there have been a fair bit of fanfare about the ITF generating their world tennis number as well. Our view is that we are non-exclusive. Uh, we don't ask for exclusivity. We've created a system. It bridges across all of these different geographies. It's a system that's working. It's been optimized uh, over 10 years and it's working very effectively and it's shown and proven its accuracy. So how does it measure up at the elite part of the game? Um, so when you look at this on the left side here, so some comparisons we've done relative to the ATP and on the right side relative to the WTA. Uh, let me be clear in stating that UTR is not intended as a replacement or to be competitive in any shape, way or form with the ATP. Quite the opposite. What we're trying to do is to build a stronger foundation to support the pathway towards pro tennis. And we want to very much support the top echelons of the game uh, at the ATP and the WTA level. We also measure something different than the ATP and for that matter, most national ranking systems, which is we measure how well you're competing at a moment in time, objectively. We're not a point-based system that measures how far you've done, uh, gotten in tournaments and how you've accumulated points. So we're measuring two different things. It's not that one is better than the other, it's just that we measure something that allows us then to develop the data you see on here, which is that we're more predictive of match outcomes. Um, if you look down below here, this particularly becomes relevant when you start moving down the rankings and you start getting down into thousand plus and, and lower ranked players. Uh, and you see real separation between our ability to predict what a match outcome is going to be. So why is that? Because as you start to get down into the ranks, we're taking results from multiple pathways uh, that are being incorporated into our ratings that speak more specifically to what particular level of player is at. Um, so all of this aggregates up into be a very predictive and very accurate rating system. It also allows us now, as we pull together data from all these various disparate sources, to now start to map players at all levels. In this particular exhibit here, what you have is an analysis that we've done that shows players across the full gamut of player segments in the United States. In the upper left-hand side, you can see the players that are sitting on the pro tour men's and women's down through college, junior nationals, junior sectionals and regionals, and then also NTRP, which some of you may be familiar with is the rating system used for adult tennis by the USTA. And what you see here is we now have mapped all of the players in the United States relative to these different segments using UTR. And what you start to be able to see is you now can start looking across these different segments. So for example, here I could look at a seven UTR and see that, hey, there are some players here in men's division three that are seven UTR, women's division two. And then as I drop down further, I see that it's the sectional boys 14s and so on. And so what it starts to tee up, of course, is the opportunity for players now to play across segments as well as across age and gender to compete with each other. Uh, and in the end, what does all that mean? It's about eliminating these lopsided matches. It's about putting people in front of each other that are comparable levels. That makes the game more fun. It expands the local opportunities and the like. Now, the other thing we are able to do now with this system is we now have built this standard and been benchmarking people is we can now take anybody in the system and we can basically put them in a composite relative to the rest of the world. So where do they rank and where do they fall? This happens to be a fellow down in Durham, North Carolina. Uh, this is a part of his profile that he has in our system. And under his stats, it shows that he is where he's ranked in the United States as an adult, across all players in the United States, world adults, and then across all world players. And I use this more as an example of just, this becomes the art of what is possible. And you can think now, whether it's by segment or whether it's by region or whether it's by country, you now can start to create this type of measuring and tracking system. So how is UTR calculated? Um, the way it's calculated, whether it's a doubles rating or a trending UTR, which looks at three months or surface UTR, or even the analytics is fairly simple, yet complicated behind the scenes. The simplicity is what we measure is really who did you play against? So the strength of your opponent and what was the score? And then we look at your matches up to the last 30, if it's for regular UTR, obviously a, a shorter period, if it's a trending one. 
And relative to score, what we're looking at here is not whether you won the match or for that matter, whether you won the sets, we're looking at your percentage of games won. Um, and so all those things get compiled and get put into the system and it spits out the UTR. At the same time, behind all this, we've also built a tremendous amount of analytics now that any player in our system can access. So whether it's a junior or adult or recreational or pro player, the analytics that are on here speak to what is available. Um, so I pulled up a particular profile here of Yannick Center and what you can see here is, hey, what's his win loss? And then here's his rating history. Um, the red dots that you see on the graph here are his wins, the gray dots are his losses. Uh, and then below that is also some results analysis here. We actually look at, hey, relative to matches he's played above and below his rating, how has he fared in terms of games won? Uh, these analytics, of course, start to lend very interesting insights into what's happening with a player. You can track, you can measure, you can also see specifically who he's played against and how well he's competing. Uh, at the same time, we have a separate rating that's completely independent from our singles rating that we've developed for doubles. Um, and there we're looking at teams competing together and have built up the rating system accordingly. So in the case of Rajiv Ram here, one of the best doubles players in the world, here's his win-loss ratio and here's his ratings number. So that also exists, whether that's for elite tennis or for recreational tennis. And of course, the other thing we can now do as we've developed these analytics is that we can now provide some interesting insights that are relevant to players in different situations. Uh, we can look at head to head, we can look at surface UTRs. And then what you see on the graphic on the right here is also what we can do vis-a-vis -vis potential predictions of matches. Um, in this particular case, this was a match uh, between Rafa and Yannick and you can see here, both in terms of uh, the predictability of what we were seeing from a regular UTR and a trending, as well as an overall win probability, um, we are able to now start to look at, hey, what is likely to happen in a match based on the most recent and trending information, as well as an overarching set of results over the last um, six to 12 months. Uh, we also now can start to do tournament simulations and other things. So adding analytics into the game of tennis makes it more engaging and interesting for audiences and also allows us to benchmark everybody on the same scale. The other thing we can do with this uh, is we now can look at tracking and measuring uh, players. Uh, this particular analysis is something that was done with the USDA player development. Um, we here have basically taken the top 100 players based on UTR for each of these age groups from 12 all the way up to 25. Uh, the gray dots are international players. The green dots are US players. And what you see now is the ability basically to track uh, and to show where do the players fall relative to the international thing. You can imagine at a federation level, this is very interesting. At an academy level, this is very interesting. And what you start to see now, of course, also here is, okay, as you go from age 12 up to becoming a teenager to becoming an adult, what is this trend line that you need to be on or what are the data that starts to show about your ability to improve? Uh, and then from that, of course, as an institution, you can make decisions around where you wanna spend your resources and where players are performing and frankly, what trajectories they have to be at. So on that note, here's actually some interesting graphs that show if you want to be on a pathway to the top 100, what trend do you have to be on? What is that pathway you have to be on? Uh, now, we ran this here about a year and a half or two ago. We were working with another federation that was very curious to see where their players fell relative to this notion of tracking towards being a 100 player. So whether it's on the top here with the men or whether it's on the bottom uh, for the women, uh, you start to be able to benchmark yourself on, okay, am I on the right trajectory here? And this happens to be a pathway to the top 100 in the world. You can also create pathways to being top 50 junior. You can create a pathway to playing D1 college tennis. Uh, so there are a bunch of different things here against which you can be benchmarking individual players to see whether they're progressing on the path and the trajectory that's required. And of course, the other thing we can do with these analytics now is that we can start to add these into broadcasts. So whether it's working with Tennis Channel here in the United States or whether it's integrating into with Tennis Australia and the Australian Open and providing 
interesting insights uh, that frankly make the broadcast a little bit more relevant to that local junior or the recreational player who has their own UTR and to be able to see, hey, what's their UTR and what does this say about how they're currently competing? Uh, these are things that we're working on as well and to bring more insights and frankly more data and analytics to the to the game of tennis, which we, of course, have seen in many other sports, but haven't seen as much in tennis. So all of this really speaks to the rating system that we built. That rating system is, tended, is intended to support tennis. Uh, we want to help proliferate that out uh, to create a standard by which it can be a tool to support tennis. And so part of our mission then very quickly pivoted to saying, hey, what else could we be doing other than just building a rating system? And this is where I think we've had profound impact. And I think we now have built a set of tools and technologies that really have been changing the landscape of tennis. This goes way beyond a rating system. Uh, some of the ones we talked about before, it goes way beyond something like a world tennis number. This is where the rubber hits the road. This is about making a tennis rating relevant to local tennis and making it relevant to coaches and federations and players. And so what have we done? We built the system, we refer to it as universal, uh, uh, the UTR engagement platform. And basically what it is here is a system that's sort of squished out here on the right. At the core of it is the UTR, the universal tennis rating. And then around that, we built a series of technologies that allow organizers to create events. Those could be tournaments, those could be clinics, those could be match play, those could be a host of different things. We give the tools and the flexibility for those local academies and clubs to use this platform to create whatever they deem appropriate. Uh, it's also a system that allows players and parents and coaches to find opportunities in their local geography at their level of interest for their players. And so in that sense, there's discovery and opportunity. We also have allowed this system to build um, profiles. And we, I showed you that a little bit before with the individual from North Carolina. Um, and these are individual profiles that every player has in here that allows you to showcase your tennis and also be able for coaches and others to track players and see it. And then lastly, the other pillar we have on here is the ability to create digital clubs. These are membership clubs uh, for all intents and purposes that are built around local tennis clubs, they're built around uh, college campuses, they're built around academies or even federations. And these become communities that then um, allow people to come together in that local environment. Tennis is a local sport. This is all about enabling local competition and local engagement. So these are our four pillars. And of course, around all of that, we built all the necessary organizational tools, communicating and messaging tools, registration platforms, as well as payment platforms that allows this to operate. So just to jump into a little bit of detail about that, that's relevant to coaches uh, and academies, uh, is that here's an example of a digital club on the right that is operated by IMG Academy. This is their digital community on our website. Um, they control it, they drive it, they operate it. Uh, they have now built a community on here that has 1,150 members. Their full-time academy members is a little bit over 200, but they have created 133 events through our system that have brought in players who participate. And whatever those players have participated, they become members of this digital community. So now IMG Academy in Bradenton has its own little community that whenever they wanna create events or they wanna message out or they wanna market or whatever they may wanna do, they have this own community. They know exactly who those players are. They know what level that they're at. They have statistics and details on them, like I showed you before, and it allows them now to create their own little ecosystem using our technology. Um, and so whether this then is used for recruiting new members or increasing their revenue, um, it obviously is something that we've made available to them that helps make their objectives and goals more readily attainable. Uh, we've done the same thing for schools. And now this is very US centric in the sense of high schools here, but the idea being that, hey, you can set up a community for a school community. These are players that typically aren't at the elite level, and, but this now suddenly allows those coaches to set up their own series of events around the schools. It allows them to, to now suddenly make these scores in the school tennis count. Uh, and it allows them, just like we showed at the club, to be able to raise money and to engage more closely with their community. 
And of course, college tennis, I alluded to this earlier before, uh, we are over 95% of all college campuses. We work with all the college coaches. Uh, we've created the same digital community that I talked about uh, here around college campuses. Uh, you can come in, you can learn about the program, you can see the rosters and the schedules. And then of course the college coaches can also run events, prospect camps, uh, showcases, whatever it may be. Um, this is also something that now has become largely a de facto sort of website for these college coaches because so many of prospective players, particularly internationally, come on here to learn more about the program, see the players in the roster, see whether they're eligible. We have a great tool on our website that's uh, called College Fit that allows any player to come in, punch in their UTR, and then basically get a whole list of players, or sorry, campuses and colleges where they would be eligible to play in the lineup. And we help connect these players from around the world um, to these college coaches for recruiting. Um, this has really fundamentally transformed the collegiate environment in the United States. More than 65% of players now competing in D1 and D3 in the United States and college teams are international players. Um, and so that is a great opportunity uh, for players internationally to take advantage of that. Um, there's some 22,000 um, team members uh, of college teams around the United States. So whether you're scholarship eligible and on the elite pathway or whether this is an opportunity to come to America and get an education, uh, we're supporting this and breaking down the barriers for people to have access and have information. The other thing we've been rolling out is just some interesting set of other products that are really geared to lend support. Uh, we launched something called Flex Leagues. I think you're probably all familiar with what Flex Leagues are. This is the ability to set up, whether it's for juniors or adults or a hybrid, the ability to do leagues in which you largely self-organize. Um, and of course, in particular during COVID, this has been very interesting and very helpful. And it gives a lot of flexibility for people to be able to play matches. Those matches then count towards verified UTR. So you don't have to compete necessarily in a big tournament in order to be able to continue to post scores and progress as a player. Uh, we also recently launched a very neat initiative around team tennis. Um, you know, team tennis is certainly something that is part of most international communities um, at different levels, certainly part of college tennis in the United States. Uh, what we've done here is we've come up with a couple of different templates for whether it be young players or for that matter, adults, both singles and doubles. And the true innovation, of course, with UTR is that these team tennis events bridge across gender. So they can be co-ed if you so desire. They certainly are always level-based because you end up slotting in teams of comparable ability against each other. And then, of course, the really profound thing that we've been rolling out with this is that we also make these things time-based. So how can we do that? Well, as I mentioned to you earlier, UTR is based on game uh, percentage of games won. And so you don't have to play a complete match in order for a score to count in UTR. So you could set up a two-hour team match here. You could play 35 minutes of uh, singles you, you know, for three players. Then you can play 35 singles, uh, 35 minutes of singles for another three players. And then those six players can play doubles. And so what you have now is sort of this notion that, hey, in two hours, you could do a great mini team match it's time-based, it's level-based, and it could be co-ed. Uh, this is really starting to ripple out uh, internationally and a really exciting way to get people engaged and have lots of fun in a team uh, competition environment. Uh, the other thing I wanted to turn to, which is very relevant to this audience and particular to the, the elite uh, coaches and, and, and aspiring players here is that we launched here in January uh, a major initiative uh, with the UTR Pro Tennis Tour. Uh, we've made a $20 million commitment to create over 450 events over the next three years. Uh, our mission and our goal with this is really to support the pathway, uh, to support aspiring young professionals, give them more quality matches, as well as the ability to earn prize money. Um, the, it's become clear during COVID and certainly even before leading into that, that the pathway for aspiring players is a very, very challenging one. It's a long, arduous process. It's one that's incredibly expensive. Um, and so what we've done here is we've set up something to complement the existing system with the ITF events and the like. 
Uh, it caters to players that are sort of 200 to 2,000 in the world. Um, it is the targeted at these elite juniors and elite college players as well as national federation players. Uh, the purpose of this is to set this up across the globe. We've launched now in nine nations. Uh, we've already run 22 events so far this year and many more to come throughout the year. And we're trying to help support the foundation uh, of pro tennis for the purposes of lending support for players to get up to the ATP and the WTA. As I said earlier before, we're not here to compete with the ATP and the WTA. We want to help support the players that are aspiring to get there. Uh, we want to make it uh, easier for great talent to be able to break through. We want to create lo more local opportunities for players so the economics of what it takes to break through becomes more uh, easily uh, achievable and acceptable. So uh, what, are, what are the major components of this? Uh, in all of these cases, we're partnering with the National Tennis Federation. So we're incorporating ourselves into the national footprint of their events and their players and, and working closely with them. In some cases, uh, that's working at their national tennis centers. In other cases, it's working with other local academies and the like. Uh, we are splitting these events across men and women. And this is 10,000 professional tennis matches a year. So why is it that many matches? Well, part of it is the format we've created. We very much have wanted to create a development tour here for the purposes of helping players improve and get better on their path up to the ATP and the WTA. As such, we've created a round robin format uh, and then a playoff. And so a 32 main, eight qualifier draw, round robin, and then you break off into playoff groups. Um, the wonderful thing about this is the only criteria for entry and seedings in this is basically your UTR, which means that anybody who's good enough is eligible to play. Um, and of course, this is a regular sort of traditional three set format. So a lot of tennis, a lot of matches, uh, it, and it really is a great opportunity for people to get that in as they're able to earn uh, uh, some dollars to support as well. Uh, we are partnering with 25 to 35 venue partners around the world uh, in the Americas, Europe, and Australia, and, and, and Asia. If there are people out there interested in being part of this or considering being part of this, whether at the federation level or, for that matter, at the local academy level, and you think this fits into the gemisch of, of your tennis environment, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we stream all of these matches live, um, so it's also a great opportunity for elite juniors and some of these college players and others and developing pros to be able to showcase themselves uh, on a global basis. Um, and we provide financial support uh, for each of these events. Uh, $20,000 goes towards uh, player prize money and $5,000 we provide uh, to uh, the venues and the venue partners. Uh, so please go to myutr.com, PTT, to learn more uh, about this. Uh, as well as go to myutr.com and, and to learn more about the various things that we're doing. But we're excited about this. We're excited about supporting the pathway. Uh, and we're excited about um, finding ways to break down these barriers in tennis. So just to wrap up here, just a quick snapshot on, on our past year. Uh, these were interesting and difficult times in the world of tennis. Uh, we sort of took the opportunity to really try to move things forward with what we're doing. We made some huge commitments and uh, we provided a lot of prize money, over $3 million in prize money this year to players. Uh, we have over 20 million match results. We've grown our player uh, footprint here. We're running in 72 countries. And on the right here, you see that we are just continuing to add new things onto our platform to support tennis. Um, so whether this is an online schooling effort to whether it's leagues or virtual events and collegiate related stuff or supporting national pathway activities, um, we just continue to try to invest and improve and to bring technology and solutions. So we're excited to part with everybody in the tennis ecosystem. I think that we are a technology and a solution provider. We want to build this technology to be as easy and as friendly for people to use around the world. And uh, we look forward to having the opportunity, hopefully, to work with some of the folks here. So from our perspective, much more to come. And uh, I think that, um, you know, if you have any questions or any interest in following up here, uh, feel, feel free to reach out to me or to go to myutr.com and, 
and touch base uh, with anybody uh, in our system here. So thank you so much. And uh, I appreciate your listening to this and uh, hope we have the opportunity to, to work together in the future. All the best.